Hello everyone. Uh, on behalf of the PHRN, I'd like to welcome you to this tech talk. My name is Felicity Flack and I'm the Manager of Policy and Client Services at the PHRN. I'm speaking to you today from the lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation. And I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of all the lands that we're meeting on today and paying my respects to elders past and present. First of all, some housekeeping. If you've got any questions for today's speaker, please type them in the chat box and you can do this at any time during the presentation. We'll answer as many questions as we can after the presentation. The webinar is being recorded and we'll let you know as soon as it's available on the PHRN YouTube channel. So we decided to run a tech talk on this particular topic after receiving feedback from our technical staff who work in the PHRN linkage units across Australia. And they were very interested in learning more about the application of AI and machine learning techniques in the linkage process. And this led us to meet with Marcos Spirito, who kindly agreed to talk to us today. So Marcus is an assistant prof professorial lecturer at the Data in data science at the London School of Economics. His research interests include high performance computing, artificial intelligence and big data linkage and analytics. So welcome Marcus and I'll hand over to you. I can't wait to hear what you've got to say today. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thanks again for uh, the invitation Felicity Nicola and all the PHRN uh, network. So it's uh, very, very, very good and my pleasure to be uh, here today to talk to you. Let's just uh, share my screen and then we can just uh, start um, this presentation. Um, okay, so good. So I think you can see my screen. Okay. Good, so uh, as, yeah, good, okay. So um, this will be about some, um, some um, efforts and methods and tools and some case stu studies we have been developing from, I would say, nine years uh, inside uh, CDAX. Uh, and uh, this uh, is not about my work, current work at LSE. Out of we uh, started doing something around hyper linkage here at LSE as well. But most of this work is about uh, 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 some initiatives and methods and tools we have been uh, doing at CDAX, okay? Uh, so, sorry. So, um, basically, uh, um, I'll give you some uh, overview of SIDAX and some case studies in terms of uh, some massive cohorts we have developed in SIDAX. And then I'll be talking about some data linkage uh, methods and tools. Uh, we have some examples uh, on uh, using machine learning and some particular case studies for uh, involving the use of machine learning for, from, uh, for data linkage. I can anticipate this is a very hard uh, approach or it's, it's a very hard, uh, it's, it's a bit difficult to, to uh, come up with a solution that uh, it's generalizable for all, all uh, the applications you have, but we have tried to do something around machine learning. And of course, with the, there is uh, some room for uh, collaboration and I just list some topics in which we can try to discuss these uh, collaborations, okay? Uh, so basically we are, um, we are based on, in Salvador, Bahia, which is the Northeast Brazil and SIDAX is uh, part of the te technological par park of Bahia. So we uh, have some rooms uh, in different floors of this building. Uh, we have some strong collaborations with uh, Fiocruz Brasilia in Rio de Janeiro and uh, ac across Brazil, let's say, and uh, we also have uh, several uh, international partners uh, across the UK, uh, United States and, and, and Europe in general, and some, some collaborations in Australia as well. Um, so the basic idea behind SIDAX, we uh, started thinking on SIDAX around 2000. 12, 2013, in how, how to build the center for uh, performing uh, record linkage and use this, uh, this uh, data for uh, health, for research and health. And we, we launched the center in December 2016, and this center is managed by Fiocruz Bahia. And if you see about the focus or the main um, objectives, it's basically 
about the integration of uh, massive databases, the integration of knowledge. So this is why we call the Center for Data and Knowledge Integration, because we have data from one side and we have lots of people uh, from different disciplines working from the other side and how we can integrate all these uh, uh, resources together. And the basic idea is to apply this for um, understanding population health problems and how we can provide evidence and come with some, some uh, solutions. And of course, we rely on some uh, scientific networks and this is very, very uh, interdisciplinary by nature, okay? Uh, so uh, the, um, Um, research in SIDAX is basically organized in terms of research platforms. So we, uh, we have around 110, 120 people. Uh, and from these people, I, I'll say eight, around eight uh, 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 people, it's about uh, researchers and, and postgraduate students, some undergraduate students, postdoctoral uh, researchers. And all these people is organized in terms of different research platforms. And uh, this is just an overview of uh, uh, how uh, we can, um, how, how we do uh, research on CDACs and which uh, subjects we are addressing. So bioinformatics and uh, genomic epidemiology. Uh, th there are people working on some specific projects for uh, uh, technologies for, for SUS, which is our um, uh, national uh, health system. And uh, the cohort of 100 million Brazilians, I think this is the most, uh, this was the, the first project, and I think this is the most famous uh, or, or no, uh, known. And recently we engage in some uh, uh, efforts in terms of uh, the COVID-19. So this is just a small, uh, a very, very brief uh, parenthesis on my presentation, just to uh, uh, let you know about the, Activities we are doing around COVID-19. So, uh, Rede Covida it's uh, it's a multidisciplinary research across Brazil uh, with more than 200 people. And this, if you go to this website, you have this uh, epidemiolog epidemiological analysis uh, by uh, uh, Epidemiological Week, and we present and, and publish some papers, some ebooks uh, discussing several topics around COVID. Uh, we built uh, a huge uh, database or data lake uh, aggregating uh, several data databases uh, uh, with uh, COVID-19 related data. Uh, you also have this uh, um, dashboard for uh, presenting some, some um, uh, update statistics in terms of deaths and number of cases and several other information around COVID-19. Okay, so this is where you can find all the efforts around COVID-19 we are doing uh, in the center. If you, have to, uh, if you want to collaborate, we are very, very keen to discuss any potential collaboration uh, involving um, COVID-19 research, okay? Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, data we have in the center, so we work with uh, administrative databases, so, so all, I would say most of the databases are, are secondary data and, and are for, for administrative purposes. Uh, these are some uh, databases from the social protection problems. Uh, and then we have this uh, unified registry and this is the main database for all the, the other uh, social programs. So any, any, any individual uh, uh, attending to apply, intending to apply to any social program must be registered in this uh, um, cadastro único, in this unified registry. And uh, we have uh, the uh, cash transfer program and uh, housing and system supply. So these are very huge databases and cover uh, specific social protection problems running in Brazil. So I just put from, from you some information in terms of the, the coverage we have, uh, um, how many records we uh, have in each database, and we can uh, use these um, databases for any uh, uh, research or any study involving uh, socio-demographic uh, and, and socio-economic uh, uh, exposure and, and benefits as well, okay? So these are from the uh, social protection program sites, and these are the databases from the um, Health, the unified health system. 
So basically, again, we had the same coverage and, and an approximate amount of uh, records we have in each database, uh, especially for um, mortality and, and live births. And uh, we have some databases on notifiable diseases. So Sinan is a database capturing data from 52 different diseases. And these ones in blue uh, are databases we have in CDAX, so for some specific diseases, okay? Uh, basically, we just ask to the Minister of Health some sp specific ex extractions for uh, specific disease, and then we get this data uh, in into CDAX. Uh, CDAX acts uh, like a, a mirror from the Minister of Health, so we have access to uh, uh, identifiable data, and we are uh, 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 we act as a mirror, so we can store all this database inside CDAX as well. Okay, so this is just a big picture of some database we have in CDAX. Both lists are non-exhaustive, which means we have much more data inside CDAX, and this is a running process to capture and, and, and update this database uh, um, at different times, at different frequencies, okay? Um, okay, so, um, the, the first project, and I think this is something you may have heard about, so the 100 million uh, cohort, this uh, was a project we started in 2012, I think. Uh, it's basically the idea is to capture individuals receiving uh, social protection uh, uh, benefits, and we start looking into cash transfer. So the 100 million cohort is uh, basically any individual that apply for, by the first time, which means we use the, the, the application, the hash to date as the, the one uh, criteria, as, as a criteria for uh, uh, putting this, this individual into the cohort and uh, some information about the income as well. And this information is new every two years. So which means we have this, uh, 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 has uh, uh, running every two years and we are able to uh, uh, um, identify people who are uh, entering the cohort and who are leaving the cohort and there's some people uh, uh, after some times enter the cohort again so we have this type of a, a, a holding process in, in, in which individuals enter and leave the cohort every two years okay just this is just to give you an idea on the distribution uh, about uh, by, by year of entry. And we call this 100 million cohort, but in fact, we have uh, 131, around 131 million people right now, up to uh, 2018. And this counts about 62% uh, of the Brazilian population. And this is about 30, 35 million families because we have information on individuals and families, okay? So this is to give a, a big picture of the, the amount of data we have there. Uh, in terms of linkage, we uh, uh, use uh, different approaches for linking uh, this, this database. So uh, we are able to link any of these databases. So from the blue side, it's about the social protection programs and we are able to link this using this uh, NIS, which is a so social ID number. Again, because any people, any individual must be registered in the Cadastro Unico, in the Unified Registry, and then these people uh, get a specific ID, and this ID allows us to link to any other social protection program. And to link this with any health database, we must use some sort of non-deterministic linkage. Uh, fortunately, we don't have any uh, central uh, number or identification number. This is something the, that the Minister of Health is, is working on from, I think, 40 years uh, so far. But again, we, we uh, have some candidate attributes to perform any linkage involving um, health care databases and for linking these databases to the social protection problems as well. And we call this the, our POP100 database, and this is our baseline for the, the 100 million cohort. Okay, uh, we uh, have some uh, um, case studies using data from these uh, 100 million cohorts and from uh, different outcomes. This, uh, just, this is just, uh, this is just a, a, a summary of some uh, recent papers, but we have much more papers. Uh, and we are just uh, 
waiting for the publication of this cohort profile. So this is a paper uh, that was accepted at the International Journal of Epidemiology and should be published in the next months. And you have a, 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 a detailed profile of all these uh, individuals by social and demographic characteristics and, 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 and several other aspects we have looked into for uh, uh, designing this cohort profile, okay? So you have this uh, uh, bunch of references, and if you have, uh, if, you, if you want m some other reference, please feel free to uh, ask me and I can point you to the right people or to the right uh, address to get all this um, information. Um, this is another cohort we have been uh, working on. This is about the live births, and we, uh, again, we uh, draw this uh, cohort based on some, some uh, idea on uh, assessing the effects of obstetric and prenatal con conditions and congenital infections and social and environmental determinants, all this uh, 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 set of exposition and how this uh, can be assessed. And we uh, look into some different characteristics from the mother and from the uh, uh, delivery as well, and the newborn and antenatal care and the obstetric history. So we have data uh, of all these uh, uh, coming up from all these dimensions into this database, okay? So, uh, so far we have this uh, around 24 million children and this is up to 2015. And uh, this accounts for uh, around half of the total births captured by the, um, by the live birth systems. Uh, and these are children linked with the 100 million cohorts. So we are able to uh, cross information with the mothers and, and the families and all the social protection programs that uh, the, the mother or the family is uh, exposed to as well. And now we are working on uh, how to link this baseline with some other uh, uh, healthcare um, uh, database and also with the cash transfer programs as well. Uh, you have the reference from this paper. Uh, so if you can go and, and have a see, again, we have the profile of this cohort and some, some uh, uh, findings and some strengths and weaknesses in this study. And it's a very uh, uh, good reading for this second type of cohort, okay? So uh, basically in terms of uh, data platform, so this, this picture is not so clear, so sorry about that, but it's just to give you an overview. So we, uh, as a center for data linkage, we uh, have the same structure that most centers have. So we uh, have this type of a data production uh, pipeline, and then we uh, uh, pass through all the uh, phases for the data production step. Uh, we have some data curation uh, um, steps as well, and, and then we have some tools and, and procedures for uh, assessing this data. Uh, and we also have some uh, ethics and privacy and security committees to discuss all the, the specific topics, okay? So this is the big picture. Uh, again, we have a, a safe room for uh, managing these identifiable data sources. Few people have access to this room. Um, there is some biometric and other uh, sort of security mechanisms and consent forms and all this, the, the, the procedures we are required to comply uh, to get access um, to this identifiable data set. So I think this is not so new. Um, in terms of methodology and, and tools we use for a linking, again, we, um, we must work with this uh, non-deterministic linkage for uh, any health uh, database so we look into potential uh, attributes for linking and these are our main attributes for uh, performing linkage so a name mother's name date of birth municipalities and gender and these attributes are present in, in all the databases so we can just uh, design any linkage strategy around this this type of uh, uh, tool we try to follow the same standard data linkage pipeline we found in several other uh, research <coughs> center works. So basically we do some sort of pre-processing and, and standardization and transformation of any data set. And then we uh, apply some blocking mechanism to 
split this data set in chunks and then perform some pairwise comparison based on different methods and different metrics as well. Um, manual review is applied for most of this process and this is something we have been working since the beginning in terms of how, how we can access accuracy and, and, and do this type of a manual review or any other sort of accuracy assessment over these massive databases. And basically what we try to do for every linkage, we try to have this kind of a minimum and maximum thresholds and decide about uh, uh, true and false matches. And everyone in the middle, we uh, um, get these as candidate pairs for manual review. And I think this is the same process, uh, which is a very, a very known approach for uh, assessing accuracy of linkage. So we try to stick with this pipeline in most of our linkage uh, efforts. Uh, we start designing some tools in 2013. So Atmo was our first uh, attempt for uh, linking these massive databases. Uh, basically, it's a, a Spark-based implementation, and then we uh, provide all the steps for from the data acquisition, data processing, until the math matching decision. Uh, we apply some techniques for blocking. So this is, uh, for example, we try to use this blocking by predicates and, and try to, to, to uh, design a very efficient blocking mechanism to uh, group these uh, similar records into uh, uh, candidate blocks for, for uh, comparison. Uh, we have used Bloom filters for as a strategy for anonymization and for um, performing a uh, comparison as well. Uh, then we designed some uh, non-deterministic uh, linkage and some hybrid approaches for performing linkage. And Atmos apply, uh, applies both uh, methods for um, when, when performing pair, pairwise comparisons and decide about linkage. So basically we applied some uh, calculation over boom filters to decide about matching. And we can also use this hybrid approach and this is based on some exact and approximate matching. This depends on, on the attributes be, being uh, compared. And we this, uh, use different thresholds for deciding about exact, strong, weak, and uh, unpaired uh, uh, records. So you have this uh, big, uh, big picture around Atmo and you have the, the, uh, the link for the paper. Uh, and at the time we got some very good results in terms of accuracy. So from your left side is basically a control scenario using some hot virus uh, um, uh, experimentation just to, to have a look on, on some gold standard and how the, the tool is performing. And from the right side is using some um, health um, care databases. So we designed these in parallel with the design of the cohort. So we just pick some random databases, uh, basically mortality and hospitalization and some not fiable diseases. And we try to, uh, to, uh, to um, and then we run the entire pipeline in Atmo for all these uh, databases and for different Brazilian states. So, um, and we chose choose this Brazilian state based on data quality and data coverage. So, we, and, and also about uh, uh, based on the size of each uh, sample. So, we start with very few uh, uh, samples from smaller states, and then we pass to middle states, and then to bigger states, and, tr and try to uh, access how the tool was performing in terms of match pairs and all the accuracy matches we uh, have been using. So this was our first um, uh, attempt. We uh, discussed about uh, scalability as well, and we try to uh, circumvent our uh, limitations in terms of resources. So from, with Atmo, we uh, were able to link up to 20 million records and using uh, multiple GPUs. And then we moved to another implementation in 2016, which is Atmo H, which is basically how we can exploit multiple uh, accelerator-based platforms for uh, pro performing this uh, pairwise comparison steps. So this is another implementation. Uh, and basically what we do in this Atmo H is basically uh, decide on how we can split blocks into uh, CPUs and GPUs and, and later perform the comparison steps. So we have uh, designed some um, 
placement routines and some uh, data uh, workload distribution uh, routines. And we explore um, multiple GPUs for running this uh, uh, linkage pipeline as well. And then with Atom H, we are able to link uh, 100 million uh, records. And this takes around, let's say, uh, one hour and a half, two hours, de depend depending on the architecture, depending on, on the database you are linked. So these are results from some experimentation. Uh, and, and you also have the paper. But this is a very suitable approach for uh, exploring um, accelerator based, based architectures for the, the, the comparison step. Okay. And the coherent tool we are using it's in, in CDAX is the CDAX RL. So this is based on Apache Lucene. And basically, what we do is um, we uh, use some Lucene functions for indexing the, the biggest database, the data set. And then we use this index data set to uh, compare against the second data, data set and perform some queries. And the basic idea behind these queries is to retrieve the most similar pairs. And then we pass this into a scoring function to decide about matching or not and choose in the best records. So this is a kind of a two stage, two big stage pipeline uh, involving indexing, query, and then scoring. Okay. Uh, and for the um, index, we uh, rely on, on, on some Lucene's uh, uh, functions as well. Uh, and we, in, and for the comparison step, we just use some different types of query. So we are able to use exact and semi exact and fuzzy queries. And this allows for some flexibility in terms of how the attributes must match. Uh, and as I said, we use some custom score functions for uh, Brazilian database. And this is basically, uh, the decision is, ba is based on some manual review and some, some uh, uh, profile, uh, uh, profiling we run. Uh, before running the, the entire uh, linkage. And then we pick some specific weights for each uh, type of attribute and we use different measures for each type of attribute. I mean, integers and, and categoricals and, and, uh, and, and, and any specific attribute will have some sort of specific weights and some specific metrics for deciding uh, when performing this linkage, okay? Uh, we got some very good results as well. So uh, this is our best tool so far in terms of uh, uh, accuracy, in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, performance as well. Uh, again, uh, this is not a so fair comparison because the, we have different tools, but it's just to give an overview in terms of performance, in terms of uh, uh, um, accuracy metrics we have. This was a study using mortality system and live birth system as well. Okay. And for the curious assessment, so this is again about um, how we can um, have some good tools for um, performing a curious assessment. So we invested in some automated tools, and this was our first attempt around machine learning for record linkage. Um, we have been using uh, accuracy, accuracy since 2006, in 2007, we had some previous publications on that. And this was uh, something we did in 2017 uh, in, in terms of how we can explore some supervised uh, machine learning models for performing the, the specific part of the accuracy assessment. So we run this using some uh, uh, cadastro unico, some unified registry, and some uh, hospitalization, not fiable disease and mortality data. And we invest in some methods for uh, 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 automated uh, review. If you see, we have this, uh, the middle is basically a logistic regression. And this one is about uh, support vector machines. So depending on the metrics, the metric you are interested in, we, get, we got some very good results using log log logistic regression especially for specificity. Uh, we got some good results using uh, support vector machines. So the, it was a, a first attempt in how we can just automate this step into our uh, linkage pipeline. Uh, this is just a, an, another uh, study. Uh, this is a, a recent one. Uh, it's basically on the live birth cohort. And this time uh, we tried to identify some potential source of bias and we took into consideration some uh, other um, proxies as water supply and uh, 
sanitary sewage, some waste destination, race, colors, sex, um, the place you live, education. So several uh, attributes were, were uh, took into consideration to uh, try to identify how we can uh, uh, have a clear uh, view on how th these attributes are influencing our linkage results. So you, you have the, the reference as well. And this is something we uh, are open to collaborations in terms of how we can measure and address bias. Um, just a, a very brief demonstration of some recent projects. Uh, this was one project uh, we, in which we uh, did some linkage as well for, uh, involving malaria uh, uh, data and some vector control data. And this was basically for the Amazonian region. This is the light green sorry, the, the, the dark green, and the, the, the gray is about the, the rest of Brazil. So we are able to capture data on malaria notifications for the, the green region and from the um, gray region as well into two different databases. So CVEP is the main database for malaria and then all the, the remaining databases. And we uh, linked these databases to invest in some descriptive, descriptive analysis uh, all this data around malaria. Uh, we designed some prediction models for uh, malaria. And if you see the, the, the bottom uh, graphic, it's, it's just a zoom for the first one. We are just looking into this uh, final, this is our prediction uh, window. And, and just to, to see how our prediction models are performing. And if you see, we had a huge influence in terms of the um, malaria data in Brazil from 2014-15 uh, onwards because we had in the past a huge number of malaria cases and then we had had some uh, governmental actions for combating malaria and then the number of cases has uh, uh, dropped uh, considerably and then as we had and uh, other um, uh, uh, epidemies and epidemics uh, and other diseases the surveillance for, for, mal for malaria, I think, has decreased a little bit, and then we start to have some more cases as, as well. And if you see, when we compare our prediction models to the real data, we still have some gaps to fill, okay? And this is something around uh, to work on, on, on as well. Uh, we invest sometimes in efforts in this uh, multi-layer visual mining. So this is another tool we have designed, especially for uh, Manaus, which is the capital city of Amazonas, and Amazonas is, is the biggest state and the states with the highest number of malaria cases. And we are able to perform linkage and perform some interactive visualization in terms of uh, uh, malaria cases and hot spots and uh, water and other uh, water areas in general and uh, some uh, um, testing laboratories and some spray zones. So we are able to plot several layers of different information and, and allow for some interactive mining of these tools. And this is a prototype uh, tool running at the uh, State uh, Health Secretary of Manaus, okay? Uh, the other effort we have around machine learning for uh, data linkage in, for, in, for, uh, 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 in general was uh, when we uh, built IMAP, MAP, it's, it's uh, another project funded by uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And the basic idea is to build some uh, composite index for all the Brazilian municipalities in terms of the nurture, nurturing care indicators. So we have five domains, domains, 31 nurturing care indicators. And we try to, to classify the Brazilian municipalities into low, middle, and high based on some on these indicators. And we uh, for building these indices, we, uh, we use a bespoke methodology. So we rely on some uh, expertise from specific people and we discuss the weights uh, for every indicator and how they, they could be combined into any domain. But we try to, to came with the same solution using some machine learning methods. So we invested some efforts in clustering uh, methods and some factor analysis. And the idea behind this work was to check whether we can use machine learning models for building this composite index. And if you see from the table uh, below, we got very different results for any uh, um, 
method. So it's a very hard, it's very, very difficult to, to came with a unique solution because this is a kind of problem uh, which is highly dependent on the set of attributes and the data quality and the, the coverage of your attributes and the way uh, you can combine attributes, uh, especially when you have different populations, uh, proportions or you have different denominators for uh, 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 aggregating data. So this was uh, much more a data engineering effort than a data linkage as well. But we try to use machine learning for this type of uh, work as well. Uh, you, you can go to the website and you have uh, some technical papers and some technical notes on how we build these indices, indices and how we use these machine learning methods for uh, try to, to build these composite indices as well. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, I think, my last uh, example. It's basically uh, we invest some time to uh, look into categorical data, and KFACT is a, another tool where we design for, uh, especially for categorical data. And the basic idea was to extend some uh, existing clustering methods, uh, and uh, we came with this uh, frequency factor, which is an is it's uh, as another. Uh, uh, measure for, for update centroids and then we test this with different similarity measures over some uh, example databases as well. Uh, and the basic idea was again how we can uh, apply some more specialized clustering methods for dealing with uh, uh, categorical attributes. Most of our database have a huge number of categorical attributes so this is a very a uh, frequent problem for us in terms of uh, uh, the, the use of any machine learning methods and every time you need to, to transform any categorical data into some sort of numerical value. And this was an attempt to solve part of our problem. Okay. And we test this with some uh, uh, existing database from the UCI repository and some uh, real database from the health system as well. And we got some very good results in terms of improvement. So um, basically, our our uh, model is able to uh, outperform K modes, which is uh, K modes is a base, like a standard or a very known metrics for this type of uh, data. And we got some very good results for the different data sets we have used, and from different metrics we have um, used for uh, measuring similarity as well. Okay, so you have the reference and you can just go uh, ahead and have a look on the paper as well. And this is the last one. We uh, have this cooperation with the University of Melbourne and we are just uh, investing in some uh, linkage methods for uh, twin pair analysis. So this was a study we did uh, in the last two years about uh, twin pairs uh, born in Brazil between 2000. 12 and 2016, and this was for this uh, co-twin control study approach, applying some logistic regression and uh, look into some exposition and some specific outcomes. And this is a paper which is also about to be published in the International Journal of Epidemiology in the next months as well. Uh, this time we try to use uh, several uh, variables for um, linking the, 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 this uh, data. So we have used data from the live births and the mortality systems. Uh, we try to rely on some, uh, because we have this uh, birth record number. So this is, is supposed to be our linkage attribute between these two databases. So we started uh, looking into some deterministic approach for linking this database. And then we also use some sort of probabilistic linkage for uh, retrieving more records uh, uh, where this uh, 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 live birth records did not work. So this is another approach for uh, in another case study uh, using this database, okay? Uh, so if you see, we have, uh, we, 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 we did some efforts regarding machine learning uh, applied to this particular problem. Again, this is a very hard and a very difficult uh, topic I won't say that AI is it's suitable because AI, I would say AI, for me, AI is like a step further. So, but we, if you are interested and we, from our side, we have a huge interest in cooperating about data linkage methods and tools, especially uh, if we can use some sort of machine learning for 
automating the data linkage pipeline or at least some part of our pipeline. As I mentioned before, we are running this bias identification um, study. So we have a work group uh, uh, work on this particular aspect and we are trying to identify how this Brazilian database uh, or, or better, to what, what extent this Brazilian database carries some sort of bias uh, uh, in the data capture process and, uh, and, and, and after that in all the data uh, missing uh, process as well. So accuracy assessment is, is a huge uh, topic for us. Uh, we are starting this uh, effort in terms of uh, sharing these cohorts. So the next step will be uh, some some fair compliant version of uh, the 100 million cohort in the live birth cohort. So the big idea is how we can share this and um, aggregate this data into other open uh, cohorts uh, worldwide. And we are also interested in some sort of cohort design approaches. So if you have any ideas or any interest, I'm, I'm very keen to discuss these or point you to the right people as well. And finally, we are very open to any any cooperation and any case study involving Brazilian and Australian data. So I think this is uh, something we uh, I, I personally started to do with uh, some uh, colleagues in Melbourne, but we are very, very open to uh, discuss any other potential collaboration. Okay. And I think this uh, concludes my talk. So I hope you like it and I'm very open to uh, discussion and questions. Thank you, Marcos. That was a fascinating <laughs> presentation and covered a lot of ground in a very short time. Um, from the Australian perspective, it's sort of mind boggling to think about the uh, size of the Brazilian population compared to our poultry 26 million. But um, So there's certainly some challenges involved in dealing with that many people. Um, so we're very happy to take some questions now. So if anybody has any questions, please write them in the chat and um, perhaps keep your microphones on mute for the moment because we've got so many people in the session today. It'll be all too confusing if you start yelling out. Um, but first question is really around multi-generational linkage. And I, here at the PHRN, we've been particularly interested in multi-generational linkage for a few years now. Um, and Lisa's question is about what variables you use for the multi general She says, can I clarify if you use mother's name only um, or do you, because in Brazil children are named using their mother's and father's last names, um, which we don't do here in Australia. Um, so wondering if this explains why you only have mother's name and I might like to ask you to sort of extend and maybe just describe a bit more uh, in detail how you do these family linkages is it just between mother and child or parent and child or do you actually go beyond that to other family relationships grandparents etc yeah thank you this is a very good question because for most social I think this comes from the social protection programs uh, history because for most protection social protection programs uh, when, the, when the individual uh, registers for the program and the family uh, tries to register for the program, the main idea is that the mother will be responsible for receiving any benefits. And this is, I think, the, the situation for most families. And, and we, we must remember that most of these people comes from very, very low income families. And uh, for some, some uh, families, you don't have the father's uh, figure, unfortunately. So the system relies on modern names for most of the, 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 the records. But uh, uh, we have discussed about using father's name and when you have the father's name and this is something you can rely on. But as we, uh, as this is another, but this again, this is another, uh, I would say, uh, uh, reliable attribute because we have father's name for a very few uh, proportion, proportion of the uh, records. So the attempt is using mother's name and then uh, use some sort of uh, address. Uh, in this case, it's the municipality code and then the gender and the date of birth. We try to rely on some more stable uh, linkage attributes. And what about linkage mm. to grandparents or grandchildren? Can you go that far mm. or is it just parent-child? 
Yeah, uh, it's basically parent and child. I don't know if you can just because we have the family information for most databases and for in, in the cadastro unico, which is the which is the, the, the biggest one. Um, we we discussed this some some time some time ago because well, one problem with cadastro unico with this unified registry because people renew this registry every two years, and we had uh, some duplicated uh, needs, the identification social number, because every time a people, an individual enter the, co the cohort, uh, he receives some sort of a new so social identification number. So we uh, spot several uh, duplicate uh, uh, identifications. And then we, uh, I remember we have discussed about how, how about linking to grandparents or try to build some sort of a family history across this uh, hash because we can we, we do have this type of a, a grandmother and the mother and the, and the child and then uh, these uh, di dynamics around the family it's a very very frequent so for every two years uh, some individual has uh, okay uh, form a new family so this individual is not is no longer part of this family and then move to the another family and then we need to keep track of this uh, social identification number to keep track of all the benefits this, this individual has, has received. So this is a huge, huge problem in terms of the, 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 the dynamics around this database. Yes, absolutely. But these are very good ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Alberto. Um, he says it's not clear on how you get a gold standard for the sensitivity specificity calculation. Uh, I think this is maybe supposed to, to a particular study, but for any study, we try to have some sort of uh, particular, uh, some sort of gold standard. So our, our basic approach is uh, for every linkage, we try to uh, build a gold standard looking into 20% uh, of the database. So we uh, handle it, uh, we, 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 we get some sort of handle samples, uh, accounting for up to 20% of the database. And then we go to some sort of manual review. And again, then in this is, a, as I say, this is a very, very time consuming process because we have some people looking to into these samples record by record and calculating this uh, true and false pair matching frequency and building these thresholds for deciding about link, uh, linking and non-link. Uh, when we design Atom, we, um, did the same process we picked some random samples and 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 built some sort of gold standard for for uh, atmo and then we try to uh, uh, use this for uh, for comparison when we invest some uh, efforts in this uh, trainable machine learning method for uh, for accuracy assessment we did the same so for uh, any health database we pick some random samples and build some sort of gold standard uh, but again, this is a huge problem for us because especially when you, you need to link from the social protection programs to, uh, to healthcare, uh, you, you don't know how many people you are going to link from so the social side to the health side. So this is always a kind of, a, 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 let's say, a, 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 a unknown fly for us. We are just trying, okay, let's see what happens when we try to link from one side to another side. So we need to decide about some sort of gold standard. And for, for and when linking between healthcare data, we are able to build some gold standard depending on the database. For example, if we are linking from the life birth system to the mortality system, so we are supposed to have some sort of gold standard. If you look to the mortality system, it's, uh, everyone in mortality system is supposed to be in the life birth system. So this is a very, very obvious uh, thinking. So we, we try to, 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 to came with the solutions for building gold standard based on, on the particular data sets we are linking. But again, we don't have an, a, a standard approach for all the database because this is a very, very uh, domain and, and database specific. Yes, I think it's an ongoing issue in linkage in general. Uh, next question is from Alexander, um, who says, for the Ultimo and CDAX RL, can you talk about putting together a team to build these systems? I imagine it's challenging to get the right mix of skills across methodology, machine learning, programming, IT infrastructure, etc. 
Yes, it's yes, a very, very good question. Uh, we started this in 2012 as a master student work with two master students uh, trying to discover how to probabilistically link massive databases. So we were a bit new for this domain. And someone from the epidemiology uh, uh, approached us, okay, let's do this together. And okay, let's try to do this one. And then we start engaging much more people uh, to work on this uh, uh, project. We, especially for Atmo, we spent, I think, one year and a half designing the, the, the tool itself. And we spent two years and a half uh, assessing accuracy. So uh, we, uh, I think it's, it's the double of the time for uh, you know, our design time for, was dedicated for accuracy assessment. And we rely in a, a very, um, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a good number of uh, statisticians and, and epidemiologists to give us some sort of accuracy uh, um, guidance. Uh, for CDAX RL, I think the, the things were a bit easier because we, we took into consideration all the, the expertise uh, designing Atmo and then we just started discussing on how we can uh, come with a solution for uh, with, with higher scalability and, and uh, that allow us to do some sort of bespoke uh, weighting for the scores, etc. But again, uh, all, all the work around CDAX is a multidisciplinary work. So we have people from data science, computer science, epidemiology, statistics, um, nutrition. Uh, I don't know, there, there are lots of different expertise working across this one. But again, this is a very, very challenged uh, task. It's still as a challenge task because we, we have around 20 people working on, on the linkage uh, part right now. And we are just discussing a new tool because Dax RL is running for uh, three to four years and we rely on some elastic search as well for indexing. And we are just trying to start to design a new tool and think on how we can uh, uh, extend and, and design a new linkage tool for this particular problem. But uh, it's again, for sure, it's a very, very challenge to coordinate all these people. And just a question from me, how's it all funded? Uh, okay, so uh, if, you, if you go to my last slide, so uh, we, <laughs> we use Atmo as a, uh, so Atmo allows us to do some sort of proof of concept. So we are funded by uh, Brazilian institutions and we got funds from, uh, Welcome Trust, uh, which is our uh, our uh, biggest funder. So Welcome Trust allow us to build CDAX in 2016. We, we got uh, funds from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, from several UK uh, research councils. Uh, we are running projects funded by uh, Google. Uh, again, because we are around 120 people working in CDAX and uh, most of these people are researchers and then we apply to different grants uh, we uh, again and but we have some so, so our running funds is basically from welcome trust and from uk uh, institutions and charities and some uh, bill and melinda gates foundation we are for example we are just installed we are just expanding cdax to a, a container based uh, analytical platform so this is supposed to be running in january and this was funded by gates foundation as well so we are just installing a huge container outside the building with lots of uh, IT stuff for our analytical platforms. Amazing. But this is a challenge to keep this running. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So I think we've got time for one last question from Francis, which is what's the quality and breadth of coverage across time and collection domain, health, justice, education, etc., of indigenous person records within the Brazilian administrative data sets? And how does this influence linkage quality and the social and epidemiological estimates that are output from these data sets? Yeah, this is a very, very good question. Thank you. If you go to the live birth, live birth cohort, we have some, uh, I, I don't remember the number, but I have, we have a, a small proportion of uh, indigenous uh, children and also children for, from uh, Quilombos, which is basically, is, 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 is uh, uh, slavery co communities, so we have some particular uh, 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 extracts of uh, of uh, the population. But again, um, the indigenous data is is a very challenge uh, uh, to, for capturing data from indigenous populations. This is a very challenge uh, uh, 
uh, uh, task in Brazil. When we were designing this malaria uh, project as well, we uh, tried to get some data from uh, uh, indigenous communities, uh, especially if you go to the north of uh, Brazil, uh, when in, in the border of Amazonia with uh, some, some uh, uh, north countries, we uh, have a, a huge number of malaria cases coming from uh, imported malaria cases coming from uh, border countries because we have lots of uh, gold miners and all, all type of this uh, work uh, carrying uh, being carried on that and we try to get this type of data i think that, that there is a movement to to try to collect more data on specific populations and especially now with the covid19 uh, pandemic i think this becomes more and more urgent uh, from from the COVID nineteen platform, we we get we I think we have some data on these specific populations, because again the, the data capture system has increased a lot in terms of uh, coverage, but from uh, the social protection programs, I'm not sure because this particular uh, 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 part of the population is not covered by the social prote protection programs, at least not. Uh, significantly so if you go to cadastro unico you 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 can find some indigenous uh, indigenous uh, uh, records but i said the proportion is very very low so uh, which means uh, perhaps you cannot run any type of uh, uh, study because you have some very few samples and this is not representative of the entire population but this is something we can uh, have a look for you and then try to discover how this uh, 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 information is captured in, into your system. From the, the 100 million cohort profile paper, we have some data on indigenous and other specific populations as, as well. But again, these are not so representative, few records for these populations. Okay, I think we will finish it there. Thank you once again, Marcus, for a fabulous presentation. And I'm sure that everybody's been really interested to hear all about this amazing work happening in Brazil. So thank you once again. And thank you for everybody who came along today, whatever time of the day it was for you, early morning or late afternoon or evening.